Blade of the Immortal is an adaptation of a manga of the same name, and it was uh, Takashi Miike's 100th film. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of Ta Takashi Miike. I haven't seen all 100 of those films, because some of them are tough to get in America, and they just don't, like, some of them aren't as big, there are a lot of smaller ones. But, you know, some of his biggest ones I love, you know, like Audition and Ichi the Killer. And uh, this one, Blade of the Mortal, is another kind of more samurai film. He's done a couple like that, and it's really good. So the film stars Takuya Kimura as Manji, and he is a samurai. In the beginning of the film, he's in this huge epic battle, uh, trying to protect his sister. And at the end of it, when he is victorious but lies dying, this uh, this monk woman uh, comes by and gives him these blood worms that will be make him immortal and he'll be able to heal from any wound and won't die. And, you know, that's kind of the setup, you know, that he was ready to die, and then now he has to live forever. And, you know, the, the story kind of jumps 50 years, and you see um, Hana uh, Sugisaki as uh, Rin Asano. Like, she is the daughter of, uh, she is the daughter of a dojo master, uh, and, you know, uh, at the beginning of the movie, there's this group, uh, this new group of uh, fighters that try to have, like, this path where there's no, it's not like, it's, it's not one path that you can master all weapons and you be better than everyone. And they kill her father and, uh, you know, Rin wants to go and get revenge on, on them. And she hires Manji the immortal blade to go after them and kill them all. You know, I like their relationship. You know, uh, Manji is kind of doesn't want to do this. He's kind of living as a hermit. And, you know, uh, Rin really wants to, you know, train and become better and to uh, kill all, of, to get revenge on all the people that killed their parents. And there's, uh, um, and there's some good stuff with that. I, just, I, I wish there was a little bit more because there's like there's not too much like of him like kind of training her. Like they have a little bit of scenes like uh, of it, but not as much as maybe I would have liked. And sometimes it seems like the time frame jumps a little bit. But like it's already a relatively long movie. I wouldn't be surprised if they had left some stuff on the cutting room floor. But the best part of the film is definitely all of the action. It, it is filmed really well, and uh, the all the scenes are choreographed excellently. And there's, uh, they're brutal. What's funny is most of it isn't as bloody as like some other movies. Like it feels a lot like Kill Bill Volume One when you know she's going against the Crazy Eighty Eight. But there's these like huge battles, and but they're really cool. And there's, there's also these more like boss battles with the uh, the top ten fighters of this of the the new fighting style. And although I, I really did like the one-on-one -on -one fights. I think really the movie does shine when they have these huge battles against this one guy against a hundred guys. And I mean, it's really crazy, really well done. I, assume, I don't know if they had that many extras or if they kind of, you couldn't really see that many, like who they were fighting. So I wonder if they kept like moving people in and out after they were killed and they brought them back. And you know, it's a lot of fun. I guess that's one thing though it's, I'm not a hundred percent on is that the, uh, the tone of the film. Like, I felt like the tone is a little too serious, and there are some scenes that I chuckled at and were kind of funny, but I'm not sure if I was supposed to find funny. Like, I feel like they didn't play it for the joke that was there. Like, as an example, uh, Manji is uh, ambushed by uh, three people of the group of Master Swordsmen, and they one of them catches his hand in a trap and like throw the trap around the tree and kind of pull him away so that they can uh, kill him that way. And uh, he kind of, if to get out of the trap, he cuts his hand off 
and then, you know, kill the guys. And afterwards, he's trying to have to be like, he'll, uh, if he puts the severed hand back to the stump, the bloodworms will heal it. But he has to get the hand first. So he's like trying to climb the hill, trying to, you know, grab the hand and get it to him so he can regenerate it. And it's kind of like a funny moment. But it doesn't quite play it for the funny moment. And there are other stuff like that too with like awkward moments or other kind of funny moments with the immortality and with other things that are going on. And I kind of wish they, uh, it, it would it kind of lighten the tone a little bit if they hadn't, if they pl uh, you know, played that for the joke a little bit more. And while this isn't as, quite as crazy as some of Takashi Miike's other films, I mean, there is some craziness and... Uh, but it is, I'd say this is, could be one of his more mainstream movies. I think a lot of people could like it. You know, if you like samurai, you like action flicks, and you don't mind uh, hundreds of, of dead people flying by. I mean, it's a good film that I would recommend. I'd probably give it like an uh, 8.25 out of 10, or something like that. You know, it's a good film, you know, especially if, I, I love action films, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out that video, play it through my head, or subscribe to me over here. Thanks.